Hello, my name is Heather Butler. I run a ministry called Hidden Treasures Ministries International. Welcome to this week's coffee break number 25. Today I'm sharing a short allegory, a picture to enable us to understand in a more simplistic way the truths of the way and the word of the Holy Spirit as he teaches and trains us today. So let's start with prayer, shall we? Lord Jesus, I thank you for the wonderful opportunity of being able to share this story with those out there today. And Lord Jesus, you've drawn us together for a reason, and that is so that you can encourage and inspire and quicken our hearts to your thoughts and your ways during our day. So Lord, would you come and presence yourself through your Holy Spirit Come and breathe new life into us, that, Lord, this word would ignite a passion within us to be able to implement the things within it in our own lives every day. So I pray for each and every person, every group that's watching, in your precious name, in Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Stained Glass Window and I wrote this um, story a couple of years ago, but I felt that I needed to bring it today. God wants you whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing broken physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally or financially. That's what I believe, and the scriptures back it up. Whole is the complete opposite of broken. Tim Greenwood spoke that out. In scripture, in Matthew 9.22, it said, But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. The stained glass window. Every single piece of my glassware laid shattered and broken on the floor. Every piece of glass that I'd collected for many years, each piece held a special memory, precious memories of a person or an outing, of marriage, an engagement of love, of a birth. I was heartbroken. My precious, precious memories strewn across the wooden floor, unrecognisable and beyond repair. I cried for a while. Not for the object itself, but the story that each ornament reminded me of. I felt it was the end of something. I was afraid that without those treasures, that I would forget the events that they reminded me of. Times of joy, times of happiness. Some ornaments reminded me of happy times spent with those who had now died, but who were very much alive in my heart. There was nothing left to do but to scoop up, scoop up the jagged pieces of glass and place them into a container. I didn't have the heart to throw it all away, so I kept each broken piece in a box in the garage. My husband gently placed his arm around me, knowing the pain of the loss of my hidden treasures. It was six months later when I had a birthday. A birthday was coming up, another reminder of how life was passing me by. I felt unsettled and restless. I didn't want to waste a moment of life. Life is a gift. And yet I'd squandered so much time worrying about the future, wondering if we would ever manage to pay all the bills and feed the children and see them all through college. And yet here I was, living in the future that I had wondered about. The children grown up and left home with lives of their own. Well-adjusted young adults full of life and a future to dream about. All those worries and cares were for nothing. I was looking forward to my birthday. It meant that my lovely family would celebrate with me and I was overjoyed and happy to be seeing them all together again with two little additions of grandchildren too. The postman came and handed me a large bundle of cards, each sentiment within them so carefully chosen, and I felt loved and happy. I had such a wonderful family and lovely friends. 
My husband told me that his gift to me would be delivered to the house that evening whilst we were out celebrating, that he had made special arrangements with the neighbour next door to help with this. I began to feel excited and wondered what it was that he was hiding from me. The evening went so well and we laughed the whole evening through, swapped memories of days gone by with each other that brought a sense of great satisfaction as I began to see the bigger picture of my life and family life throughout the years. I reminisced about the beautiful gifts that I had kept that had been smashed and broken but was so grateful that the stories they held were the very things that we had shared over our evening celebration. As we pulled up onto the drive of our home, there was a hive of activity. I could see workmen up a ladder fixing something to the wall. At first, I thought that something bad had happened. The window was out and the panes of glass were neatly lying on the floor with the frame of the window. My husband gently led me into the house and told me not to worry, that this was his gift to me and that all would be revealed very soon. We sat in the back room together, sipping hot chocolate, full to the brim with marshmallows, laughing at the sticky moustaches over our lips. I kissed my husband, looked into his lovely eyes and said, This has to be the best birthday ever. To which he replied, well, let's hope so. I hope you like your gift from me. There was a knock at the door. It was the workmen. and They said that they were delighted with the outcome of the window they'd replaced and asked, could they stay just to see my reaction to the new window? Well, I walked into the lounge. The lights were off, but the street lamp was shining brightly through the new window. And oh, my heart was filled with wonder and I had no words. I was speechless and tears filled my eyes. I stood simply not able to speak for the emotion that was raised within me. It was a celebration window to mark every occasion of my life. Those broken pieces of glass had been placed within the window. The most beautiful stained glass window that I had ever seen. All those broken pieces told a story, no longer broken and shattered and unusable, but placed within the lead in ways that captured the fullness of the colour of each piece. I looked around at my husband and he looked so pleased. And there was a tenderness about him that didn't need to be put into words as he held me and hugged me tight and told me that my life was the most beautiful of scenes that he had ever seen. He said that he was so blessed to have been part of the bigger picture alongside many who had made my life and our lives together so very rich and special. As the light shone through the window of my life, the whole room came alive. Rainbows of light danced upon the walls and shone on the surfaces, reflecting the fullness of the glory of the window, each piece set in a place that would bring out the richness of the colour that would accentuate the beauty of the next piece. The most wonderful thing about it is that there were small pieces of plain glass throughout the window, spaces left kept for future memories to be placed in. When I looked back and looked at the fullness of this gift of my life, I began to see that the picture was far more beautiful than I had realised. You see, in the craftsman's hands, Every broken, shattered piece was needed to build the picture. Every piece precious. The Lord Jesus has held every piece of my life in his hands, even the jagged and lovely places of my life, and had placed me in settings where I could be seen as victorious as I connected to the next piece and to the next piece. The husband knows his bride so very well. He sees everything that there is to see about her. He understands her far more than other men. There is an intimacy that only they share. 
He understands her ways. The husband knows how to please his wife and she her husband. And even though there were those times of weakness, of failing or anger and pain, the husband's love never wavered towards her or her love towards him. There was still excitement in their marriage, even though at times there were hardships. It simply made them stronger and more resilient to the blows of life, the more they stood together and faced things together. Jesus is a wonderful husband. Yes, to you men and us women. When he engages with us throughout our lives, the most glorious of pictures begins to take place. People are fascinated by each piece as the glory of the Lord shines through the brokenness, bringing hope to many. He is the lead that holds all the broken, shattered pieces of our lives together. He takes each piece and places it in context to the next. The picture begins to take shape and finally, we can see that all those things that were meant for our harm, the Lord turned around for our good. Hallelujah. As he used all that came against us as mighty weapons in our hands, as we help others overcome those same broken moments in their own lives. It's time to thank Jesus for the beauty of being able to put us back together again, piece by piece, wasting nothing and enabling us to see and enjoy the wonders of simply being held in his hands, crafted by his hands, placed in the right position by his hands. Your reflection is beautiful to him. Yes, it is. He knows just how to enable you to capture his glory so that others will see him in you. I know that there are many people out there today who can see themselves in that stained glass window. And many of you have felt broken and shattered. But when Christ puts us together through his Holy Spirit, there are no cracks anymore. But everything is made wonderfully brand new. And this is a picture of who we are in Christ. We do go through things in life. It's inevitable. That's life. But Jesus never fails us, and he is a wonderful husband. He would never let us down, never let us go, always trying to find ways of making our lives shine more with his glory, rubbing out all the things that we've done through his blood, through his death on the cross, and enabling us to come into that place of the wonderful treasures and the majesty of his word, his grace, his beauty, so that others can see, not us, but a reflection of the reality of who Jesus in us is today in 2016. Isn't that the most remarkable, wonderful thing? I want to pray for you right now. There are some of you out there that have been broken in those places and you feel you'll never be able to be healed again. But Jesus is a great I am. He is the healer and he desires to come to you. And some of you can see all those wonderful testimonies of life, but they're like those broken pieces of glass they need putting together into the bigger picture so that you can see for yourselves the wonders of the Lord who enabled you to become the whole person that you are today. But so that you can share testimony with others, show them the reality of Christ in your own life so that others can come to that place of belief in him to do the same in them. So let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, I feel such a rising up of joy, like a fountain in my heart. Oh, I feel such love. I feel so loved by you. And I pray that the people out there who've been listening and watching will feel the presence of your Holy Spirit so strongly. The Lord Jesus says, I have loved you with an everlasting love that will never run dry, will never run out, but that will always be there, enough to sustain you through your life into eternity. And Lord, I praise you and thank you that you love us in such 
a way that you lead and guide us into those pathways where we can be grown and stretched. Oh, Lord God, I pray that through your presence right now that you begin to touch people, enable them to remember those stories, remember the testimonies of their life, remind them of what you said, what you did through other people. And Lord, that you would ignite a passion and an excitement and a thrill as they write it down and share it with one another. Lord, in their Bible studies, during time over coffee with other people or over the or even writing a book. Someone out there needs to write a book. Come on, come on, this is your moment. So Lord Jesus, have your way. Breathe your breath in your name, Lord Jesus, that we will never be the same again. Put those broken pieces of our lives together. Heal us in all the places where we have been hurt, body, mind and spirit and enable us to come to that place of complete wholeness in you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed today, I would really like to hear your testimony. We're an interactive ministry and we'd love to hear from you. It encourages us just to know that people are watching, but more, running with these simplistic teachings, sharing them with others. If you need prayer, please email me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you're encouraged, please let us know. But most of all, please do share this program with others so that at least once a week, those in your Bible study group or small gatherings over coffee can share the truths of the Lord to enable them to be blessed and encouraged too. So you'll find all the details that you need at the bottom of the page to be able to get in touch with me. So I hope that you have enjoyed this week's coffee break and now I'm going to enjoy mine. Thank you, good night and God bless you.